Saturn V quarterly film report number three covers progress during the period May, June, July, August 1963, highlighting major effort concentrated in initiation of fabrication of ground test stage components. During this report period at Marshall, S1C efforts were primarily in support of the test fuel tank and the static test stage. The S1C test fuel tank schedule has been delayed more than 12 weeks by late documentation releases and manufacturing problems. Among the first problems encountered was excessive thin-out in hydraulically bulge-formed bulkhead gore segments. Compensatory skin mill blanks will be used in alleviating thin-out. Also, clamping pressure will be controlled to permit drawing of metal from around the margins of the die. Early in this report period, pressure spike problems were also encountered with explosive forming, a technique used as backup to the bulge forming method. Use of a neoprene blanket has alleviated the problem. Following chemical milling at Ryan, manual rework of some gore segments was required because of a non-uniform etch rate. To relieve the thickness problem, Marshall has increased gore tolerances. Despite the earlier difficulties, MSFC accomplished meridian welding on the first bulkhead, the upper bulkhead for the test fuel tank during May, and the closure plate was welded in to complete the first bulkhead. After trimming, the Y-ring mating edge of the first bulkhead was welded to the Y-ring in late May. During girth welding, porosity problems were encountered. Repairs were successful and the assembly completed and accepted in August. The porosity problem is being investigated. Several possible solutions are under study. Work is underway to complete a second bulkhead for use as the test tank's lower bulkhead. In June, Marshall finished welding on the upper cylindrical skin section for the test fuel tank. During July, the first cylindrical skin section was welded to the Y-ring. Fabrication of a second skin section was begun. With Marshall and the responsible contractors now satisfactorily solving major manufacturing problems, test fuel tank completion is forecast in December. At Wichita, fabrication of the S1CT dual configuration thrust ring assembly fixture is underway. However, this and other items have been delayed because of late documentation releases and consequently delayed component tooling construction at Mishu. During program review in early August, Marshall and Boeing formed a joint task group to deal with the S1CT problems. Marshall expects to reduce the present delay to 12 weeks during the production phase. The thrust structure assembly fixture was completed at Wichita and installation begun at Marshall in August. During August, sufficient gore segments for the first S1CT bulkhead plus spare segments were received at Marshall. However, bulkhead gore fittings are still in delay due to a change in forging requirements. Installation of two F1 engine mock-ups on the S1C basic thrust structure mock-up was accomplished at Marshall this quarter. Construction of the S1C hydrostatic test and vertical assembly building at Mishu is on schedule to meet the beneficial occupancy date of November 1st. Erection of structural steel is 85% complete. The west wall is being closed up and steel work on all others is finished. All roof trusses are also up. At Marshall's Mississippi test operations, construction is progressing on schedule. Completion of the dock and road E is scheduled by November. Receipt of steel for the dock area was accomplished this quarter. Harbor dredging is due to be finished by January 1964. Contract award for the Bascule Bridge was made August 15th. Clearing of the static test area is scheduled for completion by December. A contract was awarded in July for construction of the S1C and S2 stage test stand foundations.
A contract was awarded August 6th for assembly of two S1C transporters. Assembly began immediately and is scheduled for completion by September 1964. The Marshall Center's hydrostatic test and vertical assembly building was inspected on August 15th and contractors are correcting deficiencies. Beneficial occupancy was granted and full-scale equipment installation is underway. Pouring of concrete for Marshall's S1C static test facilities towers was completed this quarter and erection of structural steel is underway. On-site deflector fabrication and installation of cable has also begun. At Marshall's Saturn V dynamic test facility area, site preparation, excavation for the tower base and pouring of foundation concrete were finished during the report period. Steel erection is scheduled to begin in September. At Rocketdyne, the use of ablative material in the F1 engine 16 to 1 nozzle extension was undertaken this quarter with initial short duration tests proving successful. However, during the third firing, the liner bond system failed and ablative material was ejected. Investigation revealed that failure was due to poor bond between ablative material and the structural honeycomb material. A divergent ring baffled injector, one of several designs undergoing test, is complete. The injector consists of three radial baffles designed to aid in damping circumferential pressure oscillations and a divergent ring installed on the perimeter to help dampen chamber pressure waves near the injector face and protect the thrust chamber tubes adjacent to the injector. Pressure data from initial tests on the new F1 turbine exhaust manifold indicated unequal distribution of exhaust gases. An angle baffle was inserted in the manifold inlet to correct this condition. At Edwards rocket site, construction of new production F1 engine static test stands 1C, 1D and 1E continued with superstructure, tanks and exhaust deflectors having been completed on stands 1D and 1E. These stands will be complemented by the necessary blockhouse and hangar facilities now also being built. A new flame deflector has been installed in test stand 1B at Edwards. The installation was on an expedited basis to minimize interruption of testing on 1B. Construction of Marshall's F1 single engine static test stand is on schedule. The concrete towers have been completed and steel erection has begun. At North American Space and Information Systems Division at Downey, structural assembly of the S2 full-scale electromechanical mock-up was completed this quarter. Two J2 soft mock-up engines capable of gimballing have been installed. Mock-up completion is due in March 1964. It will be used in establishing installation requirements and will provide S2 systems with checkout capabilities by ground support equipment. Full-scale waffle sections for S2 bulkheads have been machined for S and ID in preparation for high energy forming at El Toro. Initial proofing of methods and procedures for chemical milling thin gore segments has also been accomplished at supplier facilities. The thin segments are formed, sized, and heat aged prior to chem milling. At SNID's Tulsa plant, S2 aft and forward skirt tooling has been completed and subassembly of manufactured parts is underway. The full scale forward skirt mating jig is nearing completion. Parts for the S-2 battleship thrust structure are being produced and inspected. The structure is two months behind schedule because of manufacturing problems. Ground support equipment assembly has also begun at the Tulsa facility. Installation of tooling at SNID's Seal Beach Bulkhead Fabrication Building has been virtually completed. Tool proofing and certification have been accomplished on the bulkhead welders the common bulkhead automatic welding jig, and the dollar section welder. The autoclave lid and dome have been assembled 
and the honeycomb bonding tool completed. Subassembly of the first S2 bulkhead for the structural test stage is underway. The first thick to thin production gore segment weld was accomplished in late June. X-rays of the segment prove the welds to be satisfactory. At the Seal Beach hydrostatic test and vertical assembly facility, the hydrostat pits neared completion this quarter and tanks for the water conditioning facility were being fabricated. At Coco One Santa Susana, the S2 battleship test stand, all flame deflector anchors were placed on the completed foundation and all four retaining walls were erected early this quarter. The battleship liquid oxygen tank was later installed and the service tower has been erected to the first level. Fabrication of the stage's propellant feed system is underway. At Coco 4, the all systems test stand, all flame deflector anchors have been emplaced. At Douglas Aircraft's Santa Monica plant, fabrication and installation of S4B tooling is four to six weeks behind schedule. Pacing items included the LOX tank welder and common bulkhead tooling. At Sacramento, complex beta construction is continuing on schedule. Test stand beta 1 and 3 foundations are completed and erection of beta 1 superstructure is underway. Work on the cryogenic vessels is in progress. Test stand beta 1 instrumentation tunnel construction has been completed. Assembly of propellant tanks for the S4B battleship stage was finished at complex beta during the report period. Hydrostatic test and calibration of the battleship stage tank was completed in late August. As the next step, tank insulation is to begin next quarter. Construction of the S4B assembly building at Douglas's Huntington Beach facility is continuing and tooling is being installed. Assembly tower foundations have been finished and structural steel is being erected. Construction is behind schedule, however, because of delays in contract award. Present estimated start of hydrostatic stage assembly is November 30th. A full-scale mock-up of the S4B forward dome and skirt section has been shipped from Douglas to the Marshall Center for use in evaluating interface problems and design of the Saturn V instrument unit. At Rocketdyne, evaluation tests of an initial design of a pressurized armored harness for use on the J2 engine were held this quarter. Objective of the harness is to provide complete moisture, abrasion, and heat protection of electrical and fuel lines when the engine is installed in the vehicle. Construction of J2 engine test stand Delta II at Santa Susana is almost complete. The stand will initially be used to static fire the J2 in duration up to 500 seconds at sea level. A 225 foot tall exhaust stack at CTL-5 was installed to vent gases generated during J2 and F1 pump tests. A prototype hyperflow system of generating steam was also tested. Steam is generated by injecting water into a heat generating device which operates like a rocket engine. Steam is ejected into a diffuser which lowers pressure in the altitude chamber to permit testing of the J2 engine under simulated altitude conditions. <laughs>